Hey everybody, it's Stasia Bliss. Welcome back to talk about Kundalini awakenings and life force management. I wanted to break it down really basic today because sometimes this can seem like it's complicated, but it's really, it's, it's simple. Doesn't mean it's easy all the time, right? <clears throat> so let's begin with the introduction of what a kundalini awakening is, is it's taking you from being not aware of your entire existence and the potency of you to being aware to a greater and greater extent. And remember, we're divine beings. So in order to have the human experience at all, it only makes sense that we would have to kind of forget our divinity, right? We'd have to forget it and then there'd have to be some kind of a process to bring it back online. So that's what the Kundalini awakening is and so it starts very basically and fundamentally with becoming aware of this, the physical body. So you think you're aware of your body before an awakening but really through the process, it's like your sensitivity and your like hyper awareness of the physical gets turned, the dial gets turned up. So where you weren't really like feeling your stomach digesting food before, now you can. You weren't really noticing your heart beating, but now you notice. You didn't really notice the glands in your throat, but now you do. You didn't really notice that you're the mass of your brain sitting in your skull, but now you're aware of it. Like these kind of things can feel really uncomfortable. Right now the sun is like super penetrating my back. So that's why I'm moving all around. I'm gonna just breathe with that. Like I said in another video, like using the infrared, like the sun and I communicate in a different way now. So I'm just gonna tune into that. <clears throat> So the body awareness is the first layer. Another layer is your emotional fluctuation. So women, maybe this is heightened for, but men have it too. Some people like to say men have periods too, but I don't even like that word. So why would I give it to you men? <clears throat> so becoming aware of your emotional like ups and downs, right? It doesn't, when you're first aware of this, like your first inclination is like, oh my gosh, I'm bipolar. Like sometimes I'm happy and sometimes I'm sad. <laughs> but that's just being human. So there has to be um, a much more severity. And even in awakening, like our, our heightened awareness of our emotional state makes it seem more pronounced to ourselves and to others. Because when you're sad, it's like suddenly you're really aware of being sad. And when you're happy, you're really aware of being happy. So you're going from like really small blinders of the world. You're just like looking out the lens that your mom and dad gave you and maybe the school and maybe, you know, it's just like this, this view of reality. Like, oh, this TV show is on at 7 p.m. every day and we eat potatoes on Wednesdays and, you know, algebra is not like addition or whatever. Like, you just have this small window and then like, you know, little things blip in, you watch a movie, like Uncle Joe comes from Singapore or whatever, like weird things come in. Or a trauma happens and you get like a, a distorted view of reality that's not the whole thing, but still, you're still limited. A kundalini awakening is like pew, broadening your awareness and every awakening is like a dilation of your consciousness. So you're hyper aware of emotions. So tracking emotional cycles is an awesome thing to do on a calendar or in a journal where you can look back at it and go, huh, happy, sad, happy, happy, sad, sad, or whatever. Um, and then you can start to see the symphony in that when you're doing the integration work. You can be like, oh, look, I have this beautiful symphony of emotions. 
Or you can say that's also around the full moon and new moon. Look, this is what happens as the moon's waxing. This is what happens as it's waning. So you can start to track your emotional status, okay? Then another set of awareness is you, you begin to be hyper aware of seasonal transitions and weather. Okay, so where you may not have noticed, I mean, if you've seen a little kid, you see a little kid run out in the cold or, you know, without enough protection or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh, you're gonna freeze, or oh, do you know the weather? It's almost like the older you get, the more aware of the weather you are, but when you're younger, you're really not. <laughs> but during an awakening process, the elements speak to you. The seasons teach you because your cycle and their cycle are one. So you go through rebirths, blossoming periods, shedding and death cycles in your own life. And so the seasons, you like the more you can start to align with them, eat with them, like be with the seasons, this supports your awakening. I talked about this entirely in a, in a different video. <clears throat> So these main things, body awareness, emotional awareness, and seasonal awareness, and then we can keep going because you just keep becoming aware of things. Like you may become more attuned to planetary movements. In the zodiac, a lot of people are drawn to astrology when they have their awakenings because now they're realizing they are sort of at the whim in a way, or they're largely influenced by planetary bodies and the influences of these planetary bodies. Whew, this is really warm. <clears throat> it hasn't been like this warm in a while. Um, and the sun in St. George is different. So those are the main things about the awakening experience to think about is like your awareness getting bigger. And this, this can include so many other elements, but if you're just thinking of it like, you know, this dilation, the goal isn't to like break yourself completely open and see everything. That's kind of what I wanted to do and attempted to do in my awakening journey that was a little bit detrimental. Um, I mean, it took me a while to re put some boundaries up and then like figure out how to flux into this big open space, right? Because this physical body necessarily wasn't built for the whole circuit until you build it over time with mental components like you have to plug your brain and your DNA to it so that's that's another level of awareness um, and that seems overwhelming at first because you're not thinking about all those things it's too many things to juggle <clears throat> but as you awaken to greater and greater levels of yourself you start to realize you are multi-dimensional and so you can actually have several different things going on and you know, women are versed at the multi-dimensionality, right? They can have the laundry going and do the wash and the kids have to be picked up or whatever. It's that skill. Sometimes the masculine energy is more like focused. <clears throat> so in multi-dimensionality, um, you do have like multiple things going that you're focusing on each one while they're like kind of playing out. It's like you put this, the bowl up and it's spinning and then you come back to do this other thing and you come back and you know complete this process. So don't think you have to learn all of that all at one time, right? Start with the awareness that I'm becoming aware of my bodily tissues. And that's what yoga or the martial arts or pranayama, like all of those are really good for bringing attention and focus to the physical body. Study in anatomy class. Get to know your muscles and bones. It's boring, <laughs> but it's also important and exciting. I wish they named them a little bit easier. The muscles, I'm like, how is one person going to remember or let alone write or picture this name in their mind, you know, to some of these muscles. But these kinds of things, do you know like I have an, a face exercise program that I just started so we'll see how it does <laughs> um, as I'm going through this process of you know advancing the time I've been on this earth <laughs> and I start to notice things about my face I'm like well I know yoga for the face so 
I haven't been doing it because I haven't really been thinking about my face really needing it so much. But now that that's come to my attention, it's like that plate's in my, co my court and I'm playing with that. Anyway, I'm losing my voice a little bit right now because I had some strong things to say earlier. Um, uh, my son is learning to drive and um, I'll just, just as a side note, I love him. He's so dear. He's really like blooming and blossoming and is an awesome young man. But when you start to see your teenager, like start to try to do real world stuff and you realize like, oh my gosh, I haven't taught them enough things about real life. So I'm really like had strong words to say to myself. So we got into a conversation. He actually loves it when I get intense. He's like, that really helps me, mom. And I'm like, I really don't like it. But um, so that just happened. And I like, I really got to be in a place where I'm like, okay, I'm aware of how my life is affecting others and those in my sphere that I have, you know, care for that, you know, it's my job to care for like the rings of Saturn, right? The discipline, the things that need to be done to cultivate the place where we can jump off into the higher dimensions um, is another area that we get more aware of as we expand, right? And then like also where to let go, where, where it is, it is not ours to do and we release others to their journey. Okay guys, well, that's all I have today for you. I did want to get a little bit more in detail into Tantra. We'll have to do that in another video. Someone was saying they don't really understand what that is and we will get more into that. Um, yeah, so these are the basics. So heightened awareness, yo. Practice where you're becoming more aware where maybe you weren't. And again, remember, that awareness can show up like it looks like pain or it looks like discomfort when it really just was something we, we didn't notice before. Okay, much love to you. Until next time, namaste.